Good morning everyone and welcome to our service today. May all of us experience the Lord in a very meaningful way as we come to connect with Him, experience Him and share in His love and His grace. Ndia nibulisa, nonke gegama, lenkosi yetu u Yesu Christu. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Happy birthday to everyone celebrating a birthday this week. May the day be fun and fabulous and filled with laughter. And may the here ahead be a here that's blessed by our Lord with grace, peace, good health and love. We're going to start our service by listening to the hymn as the deer pants. As the deer pants for the wild so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. to worship this morning comes from Habakkuk 3 verse 17 to 19 and here we read the following even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren even though the flocks die in the field and the cattle barns are empty yet I will rejoice in the Lord I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon the heights. As we come this morning to connect and worship God, we all have our own baggage, our own issues, our own weaknesses. And so often we look at this world around us and it leaves us feeling numb and anxious and alone. Our call to worship this morning comes to remind us that no matter what we face, no matter how we feel, 
we can rejoice and be joyful in the Lord for he is our source of strength. He is our rock. He gives us security and protection and makes us sure-footed as a deer. And so as we come to connect with God this morning, let's bring to him all the things that are keeping us away from him. Let's quieten our minds. Let's become still in our souls as we open our hearts and our minds to our Lord. Let's seek him in silent and individual prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, we are here, here to connect with you, here to grow closer to you, here to experience you, here to feel your closeness. You are an awesome God. You are almighty and all powerful. You are filled with justice and righteousness. You are loving, forgiving, and filled with grace. And so we come just as we are before your holy presence to worship and adore you today. Lord, you know us. You know where this past week we've gotten things wrong. You know where our thoughts, our actions and our attitudes went against your divine will. You know where and how we sinned against you and our fellow man. You know where our greed, selfishness and own ego is more important than your will. You know the times we had an attitude of my way or the highway instead of your way. You know where we gossiped, lied, purposefully created disunity and conflict instead of bringing peace and healing as you ask us to do. Holy Spirit, come and convict us of our sin now. Come and show us where we went wrong. Come and reveal to us your path instead as we humbly approach your throne to come and confess our sins silently and individually. Lord, hear our confessions, see our repentant hearts. We are sorry, Lord, for what we've done in this past week. Come and cleanse us, come and pardon us, come and let your waters of grace and mercy flow over us anew and afresh. Come and change our ways of thinking, our ways of being, our ways of acting. Transform us so that we may be ever more like you. Thank you, Lord, that we know you promise us that when we truly repent, when we truly turn away from our old self and our old ways, you take our sin and you separate it as far away from us as the east is from the west. Even though we may be scarlet red with sin, you wash us to be white like wool. Thank you, Lord, for your cleansing and renewal in our lives. Walk with us this week and reveal your will to us so that we may daily deny ourselves, pick up our crosses and follow you. Lord, we are here today to worship you, to praise you, to learn more about you and to grow closer to you. Come and reveal yourself to us. Come and speak to us through your word, through the lyrics of song, through the kind gesture of a neighbor. Come and reveal your light to us. Come and wrap us in your arms so that we may feel and experience your closeness to us today. Be with this service and all other services taking place in your holy name. We ask this in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
We are now going to listen to the worship song, Only a Holy God. Who else commands all the hosts of heaven? Who else can make every king bow down? Who else can whisper and darkness trembles? Only a holy reading this morning comes from Psalm 36 and I'll be reading from the NIV translation. You are more than welcome to follow along with me. Psalm 36. An oracle is within my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for in his own eyes he flatters himself too much to detect or hate his sin. The words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. Even on his bed he plots evil. He commits himself to a sinful course and does not reject what is wrong. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your justice like the great deep. O Lord, you preserve both man and beast. How priceless is your unfailing love. Both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delight. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Continue your love to those who know you. Your righteousness to the upright in heart. May the foot of the proud not come against me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. See how the evil doers lie fallen, throw down, not able to rise. Here ends our reading this morning. May the Lord bless to us the understanding of his holy word. Many of us are experiencing the back to reality type of feeling. As our vis visitors have gone home, as our holidays are starting to come to an end, as we start to prepare or perhaps have already gone back to work and are preparing to go back to school or to varsity, 
our weekly activities are starting to normalize again as we get back into our routines. And for some of us, this year has started out with some New Year's resolutions, whether that means losing weight or perhaps trying to live each day more purposefully, noticing the good things and the blessings that we receive from God every day. Others of us perhaps had a different start to the year where things didn't go well. And so we've decided not to even make New Year's resolutions because really, quite frankly, what is the point? Because as soon as February, February comes racing around, we've forgotten all about these resolutions and we've fallen back into our old habits and routines. And so our lectionary reading this morning invites us to just stand still for a moment, to just stop, think, ponder, and remember some of the basic truths of our faith that may help carry us through this here to come, whether it started out positive or negative. Psalm 36 contains some of the most beautiful language and imagery in the book of Psalms. And when we break the Psalm down, we notice that it falls into three sections. The first four verses, the psalmist takes us on a tour of his thoughts as he reflects upon a wicked person. What a wicked person may think, may say, and how they may act. And then the text moves very abruptly to a hymn of praise that describes God in a very beautiful way in verses 5 to 9. We are reminded of God's character. God's saving and protecting, God's holiness, and that God is the only one that will be able to stop the wicked. The contrast between God and the wicked is evident and crystal clear in these verses. And then the hymn ends off with verses 10 to 12 with a petition where the psalmist asks God to protect him against the wicked and where the psalmist once again places his complete and utter trust in the Lord. So let's take a closer look at these sections, shall we? In verse 1, we find a very interesting Hebrew word, pasha. This is translated as sinfulness in the NIV translation. In some other translations, it is translated as transgressions and also as rebelliousness. <coughs> Now, if we had to describe the actions or the attitudes of a sinful person, a rebellious person, or a person who always transgresses, transgresses, how would your description of such a person look like? What, in your mind, would they be guilty of? What would their actions look like? What would their attitudes be? Well, the psalmist gives us a description of what a wicked person looks like. And he has quite a couple of thoughts about this subject. According to verse 1 to 4, a wicked person is both foolish and cunning. At their very core is a self-centered and egotistical individual. The only thing that is important to them is me, myself and I. And this mindset begins to grow and before they even know it or realize it, their sinfulness, transgressions and rebelliousness begins to pulsate outward from their thoughts, spilling into their actions. And they begin first to unintentionally and then later intentionally harm others by their words, their attitudes and their actions. For these people, it is always my way or the highway type of attitude. There are no compromises. There is no listening to other opinions. There is no room to create space for others' thoughts or feelings. A deep-seated selfishness governs their every move, every action, every response. Their eyes are blinded by pride and self-absorption as they are unable or perhaps even unwilling to recognize their own sin. They are unable to see how their actions, their thoughts and their attitudes 
actually harm themselves and those around them. And so they constantly hatch plots against others. They constantly go around creating disunity. They constantly go around creating drama and conflict. They constantly try to dig holes for others, hoping that they would fall into them. And instead of sleeping at night, they lie in their bed and they make plans as how to get what they want, no matter what the cost or hurt to others. Hatred drives them. Deception is their playmate. And they go to great lengths to harm the community by stirring up trouble. Nothing is sacred, nothing is off bounds. And so they use whatever they can to deceive so that their secret wheeling and dealing will come to fruition. <sighs> these people sound really unhappy and dangerous, don't they? Now, as we read these verses and we hear this explanation, how many of us immediately had someone in mind who fits this description? Stop right there. Let's first take a very hard look in the mirror. How many times do we not fit this description? How many times are we not self-centered and egotistical? How many times are our lives not centered around what I want, what I need, what I like, and good riddance to those who disagree, and good riddance to those who don't like what I think? I'll sort them out. And before we know it, we become hard, we become uncompromising. We no longer want to create space for anyone else because we know I'm right. And then before we know it, we begin hatching plans as we gather with friends and we gossip about so-and-so. Have you heard what she did again? Have you heard what he said? And even if what we gossip isn't true, maybe it's just a half-truth but we use it to spin that narrative so that others could agree with us so that we can create an us versus them mentality. This happens in our friendship circles. It happens in our family groups. It sometimes even happens in our marriages. It happens in any organization that we are involved in. And yes, it even happens in the church. And what's more is that we are all guilty of this at some point. And once we step into this trap, it's not about what God wants anymore or about what God's will is or about what God teaches us, but it's all about me, myself and I. The psalm then moves on to the second section, verses 5 to 9. Now, while the wicked are set on destroying and disrupting relationships through lies and trouble and flattery, the psalmist reminds us who God is. And we suddenly take a very sharp turn from the hatred and the wicked to the steadfast love of God. Now, if you had to sit down and describe the character of God, how would you describe God? What attributes? features or traits would you focus on? Our psalmist focuses on one word, a very important word in Hebrew, chesed, a word that is very difficult to translate into English because it has such a profound and deep meaning. It refers to God's faithfulness, God's graciousness, God's steadfastness, God's loyalty, caring, protective presence in love. God's love is unfailing. It is certain. It catches us. It stabilizes and calms us. It's linked to righteousness, faithfulness and justice. God's chesed is the source of God's goodness. God's love manifests itself in loyalty and it's embodied in honesty. Now these attributes from God are limitless and in abundance. Because his love reaches to the heavens, his faithfulness reaches to the skies, his righteousness is like the mighty mountains, and his justice is like deep oceans. It extends to humans, it includes animals, it is steadfast and unfailing. 
It offers people refuge beneath God's wings and it grants us life-giving water and light in our dark times. It is the amazing character of God that gives us hope, that helps us to remember His grace, that helps us to hold on to Him in times of trouble and turmoil because we know that God is precious to us. Knowing God means knowing God's steadfast love and faithfulness, knowing his mercy and justice, knowing his righteousness. God is committed to preserve and maintain his relationship with us all and with his whole creation. And because of this, we know that God is the only one who can stop wickedness. God is the only one who has the power to change the hearts of humans. He is the only one that can soften hard hearts, help us to let go of our pride and our ego, help us to stop the lies and the cheating, the gossiping and the making plans to hurt others. God is the only one that can help us to change our ways to help us to stop focusing on ourselves and instead to begin begin to focus on him. Which brings us to the last verses of the psalm, which is a prayer and a petition from the psalmist to God. He asks God's steadfast love to continue, no matter what may happen. He asks that God will uphold the righteous in heart and that he will protect them from the onslaughts and the attacks that come from the wicked. He pleads with God that the wicked will not threaten those who follow God and that God's faithfulness will protect those who are vulnerable and need his assurance and his comfort in all times. And then the psalm ends. But what does this psalm come to tell us this morning? as we begin to fall back into our everyday rhythms and routines how does this psalm call us to stop to think to ponder and to remember some of the basic truths of our faith that can carry us in this year to come we are currently in the time of epiphany which is the season in the church where we are where we are reminded of how god reveals himself to us this psalm comes to remind us of how God makes himself known to us through God's chesed, his faithful, uncompromising, unconditional, loyal, precious and protective love. A love that he loves us all with. The psalm comes to remind us just how powerful God's love for us is and just how vast and how limitless it is. But it also calls us to take a look in the mirror because we are all sinful. We all have weaknesses. And one of our greatest weaknesses is our own pride, our own ego, and our own selfishness. It starts out small with a small unintentional thought especially after we've been hurt in some shape or form. And then before we know it, it consumes us. The once small unintentional thought grows into hate. And then we begin to inflict hurt, damage, conflict, trouble and chaos onto the person we wish to get back. And when we do this, we become the wicked that this psalm describes. So what do we do when we take a look in the mirror and we really, really take a moment to be honest with ourselves and then we find that I have fallen into the trap of the wicked. My hurt and my pain has consumed me to such an extent that I've become hard that I've become uncompromising, that I have told so many lies that I no longer know what is the truth, that I've gossiped so much and destroyed other people's reputations, and I continue to lie 
and cheat. Continue to make plans to get back at others. Continue to create disunity and conflict and stir up trouble. When we are truly honest with ourselves and we realize that this is what we do, we need to fall on our knees before our Lord and our Savior and repent. It is no use that we say, sorry God, but tomorrow we do the same thing. It is no use saying, right, I'm going to stop cheating, I'm going to stop lying, I'm going to stop gossiping, I'm going to stop creating conflict, sorry God, I won't do it again. And then tomorrow morning when we wake up, it's the first thing that we do. Because when we do this, God doesn't forgive us. When we do this, we are not only lying to ourselves, but we are indeed lying to God. And none of us wants to lie to God, do we? Because God knows when we lie. He sees us. He knows us. We therefore really need to do all we can to change our ways, to be transformed in the Spirit. And we can know that if we truly want to change, if we really truly want to start anew, God will be there to help us. His chesed will come alongside us to cleanse us, to soften our hard hearts, to help us to become ever more like Him. If we allow God's Spirit to work in us, the Spirit will warn us before we get self-absorbed. The Spirit will tell us when we start doing things that is wrong. The Spirit will remind us of what is important to God, which is to love God and love our neighbor unconditionally. Now, what do we do when we really take a look at our lives and we notice that there is a wicked one in our lives trying to disrupt our lives? Someone else is going out of their way to make our lives miserable, filled with conflict and trouble, and they're continuously trying to hurt us. Well, then we do the same thing. We fall on our knees before the Lord. We earnestly, intentionally and authentically go before God and pray that God will bless that person. We pray that God will reveal himself to them. We pray that God will enfold them and soften their hearts. We pray that God will show them the error of their ways. We pray that God will sort it all out. For God is the only one who has the power to do that, not us. So when we are hurt and when we are in pain, we need to go to God with it all before it has the opportunity to trick us and cause us to fall into the trap of the wicked. And we need to make sure that whenever we do see a person going out of their way to make our lives miserable, that we act in kindness and in love. Even if our blood is boiling, even if we are hurting, we show them love and we show them kindness and we leave it with God to sort out. In these moments, God's chesed will come alongside us to bring us comfort, to grant us strength, to give us wisdom and to give us the right words at the right time to bring his peace and share his love. For that is what God asks us to do, to love him and to love our neighbor unconditionally. Whatever may happen this year, whatever trials or tribulations await, we can know and rely on God's chesed God's love catches us, it protects us, it strengthens us, it grants us compassion, grace and mercy. It is loyal, it is faithful and it stands the test of time. This is the God we worship, this is the God we praise, this is the God who loves us, all of us. We need to remember God's will will always happen even if it takes some turns. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you are the God of grace. You are the God of glory. 
You are the God of heaven and earth. You are the God that has all the power and you know what your will is. This morning we come to thank and praise you, Lord, for your chesed, your love for us that is faithful, loyal, uncompromising and unconditional. We know that we don't deserve it, but we are grateful that you love us like this. Lord, you know us. You know us intimately. You know how big or small our egos are. You know how selfish we are. And you know exactly what's going on in our hearts and our thoughts. We come to you, Lord, to ask that you will help us to be honest with ourselves and more importantly, to be honest with you. Hear our prayers. Reveal your way to us, not our way. Help us when we confess and repent that we truly confess and repent. Help us, Lord, to stop all the things that is not from you, all the gossiping, all the lies, all the cheating, all the manipulation, all the wicked thoughts we have as we try to dig graves for others. Change us, Lord. Shine your light into our darkness. Wash away our greed, our selfishness and our pride so that we can become ever more like you. Lord, if we are hurting and if we are aching, if we are upset, come and grant us comfort. Come and grant us compassion and kindness towards those who hurt us. Come and help us to deal with our anger and our hurt in a positive way before it turns into hatred and wickedness. Grant us the wisdom and the courage, the compassion to continue to show your love even to those who've wronged us. Help us to forgive them even if they don't ask for it. This morning, Lord, we pray for the scholars and the teachers as they prepare to go back to school. We ask, Lord, that you'll grant our scholars a thirst for knowledge and that you'll grant the teachers patience. We ask you, Lord, that you'll be with every school in our community and our country and that your presence will keep our children safe from drugs, from violence and from danger. Lord, we pray that you change the hearts of those who sell drugs to our children, change their beings, transform them in your power so that they will stop spreading this evil to our innocent children. We pray this morning, Lord, for all the matrix who have received their results. Lord, be with those who are excited for this new chapter in their life. But also be with those who perhaps feel like a failure, who feel like giving up, who feel disappointed and broken because they didn't pass. Help them to realize, Lord, that the sun will shine tomorrow and that they can always be successful and try again. We pray, Lord, for our country. You know the ups and downs we face, the challenges we have, the things that cause us to worry and give us anxiety. Lord, you know everything that is good about our country, but also everything that is bad. We pray against the corruption in our government. We pray that you will change the hearts and minds of those who seek to only fill their own pockets at the expense of the poor. We pray that you will help the judges in our country to be unbiased and fair the doctors and the nurses to have energy to heal us, the teachers to have the love and compassion to teach our children well. Be with our builders as they work hard to make our homes safe. Be with the accountants to help us look after the money for our old age. And be with our churches to fulfill our moral obligation to be the conscience of our country. God bless Africa, guard your children, guide your leaders, and give us all peace. Amen. We now are going to listen to the hymn God of Grace.
ubabalo lenko si yetu u Yezu Kristu, utando lukatiko, ubutlelwana lo moyo u yinkwele, malube nani nonke. En nou mag ik genade van God, die liefde van Christus en die gemeenskap van die Heilige Gees met elkeen van jylle wees en bly. En nou met the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. 